Achieving stability in your reef tank is key to its success, and it's very similar to cooking a good pot of chili. Let me explain. Just like a good pot of chili develops a richer, more melded, more bold flavor over time, your reef tank is not going to achieve stability straight out of the gate. It's just not going to happen. It would be so similar to cooking a pot of chili and slamming it together in 15 minutes, cranking the heat to max, stirring it around a bit, and then serving it to your guests. I would wager to bet nobody's going to enjoy that chili. And just in that same mindset, your aquarium is not going to enjoy that scenario of everything being crashed together and then adjusted wildly over the next little while. Before we can even get into discussing how we achieve stability in a reef tank, we first need to define it. And for our intents and purposes here, stability means maintaining a healthy environment for your marine animals with very minimal fluctuations to your water quality and your water parameters over time. We've heard it said so many times by experienced reef keepers that stability is the key. That is the thing that we should be chasing, not numbers. And the reason is because a stable tank is a more healthy, more inviting environment for all of the animals found within it. It's going to prevent problems with coral like bleaching and uh, tissue necrosis and even death. It's going to make a, a better environment for your fish to be able to fight off pathogens and other problems. It's going to lead to less algae outbreaks and problems like that over time with the tank that don't, aren't directly related to the animals, but the environment instead. Having this stability is very important. Probably the most important thing that we can do for our tanks. So how do we get there? The number one thing is time. This is not going to happen quickly at all. You're going to have to allow that tank sufficient time to go through its four main phases of life. And I'm going to cover those here in just a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. Introducing bacterial diversity into the aquarium is one way that you can help achieve this goal. Getting live rock, established living rock from other running systems and different running systems and putting that into your tank is a great way to boost your bacterial diversity. All of those tanks are going to be running with their own separate individual microbiomes. And if you can get a rock from this friend and a rock from that store and put that into your tank, you're going to be introducing those diversifications in biome into your aquarium. And diversity is actually one of the main keys to stability because you have all of these different organisms doing all these different jobs and they're all using up different elements and minerals and nutrients and all of that stuff. So eventually so much is being consumed and then output that you reach this equilibrium with the tank where it's just chilling. Introducing this bacterial diversity into the tank earlier in the tank's life can help you get to that road of stability faster but it's still not going to be a quick process. It is going to take a while. Now, there are basically four different phases of a reef aquarium's life. Bam! And I'm going to use this graph on the screen to explain what these phases are. Right over here at the bottom, we have the nitrogen cycle. Now, this is going to happen to every single tank that we set up, regardless of how we set it up. It might be longer for some people or shorter for other people. In the end, it's going to take anywhere from a couple of weeks to about eight weeks, maybe even 10 or 12 for this process to finish and be done in the tank, ready to move into the next phase, which is the ugly phase. And in this situation, this is largely dependent on the water that you're using in your aquarium and the foods that you're using and things like that. The ugly phase can last anywhere from zero days because some people never even see it happen in their aquarium all the way to the point of several weeks or maybe even months, depending on the water that you're using. This is largely accounted for by the silicate content in your water that you're using for your top off and stuff like that. So just make sure that you are doing the things you need to get rid of those silicates from the water you're putting in your tank and it will shorten the amount of time the ugly phase hangs around. That's a pro tip, but the ugly phase generally does last several weeks for most people. So we're already into this months. You can see just from these two phases that we're in at least 
four to five to maybe six months at this point. And then the tank is going to go into a maturity phase. Now, this can go months to even many months. I would say most tanks reach maturity at about one year of age, maybe 18 months. But the tank is going to be going through all kinds of processes during these stages before it reaches that fourth stage, which is the stability stage. And that's why the graph kind of goes up and then tapers off at that end. Because once you hit that, the tank is in a stride and it really resists changing on its own. It's not something you're going to have to be daily monitoring anymore unless you have certain corals and that there's always a caveat to things I say here. But for most people, the tank will just be cruising. Now, just like making a good pot of chili, the more stuff you do to the tank in these first three phases of its life, the longer it's going to take for all of that stuff to come together as a cohesive dish. If you wait till the third or fourth hour, you're in here, you're simmering this chili, you're just getting things ready, it's going to be perfect. And then in the fourth hour, you dump in a whole bunch of seasoning and a bunch of raw ingredients and expect to serve it in the fifth hour, it's not going to be worth a darn. All those ingredients are going to be raw. The All of the melding and the coming together that everything else did is going to be interrupted by this new stuff that you've put in the pot. And in the same way with your reef tank, if you set these tanks up and you're going through the nitrogen cycle, you get into the ugly phase, and I see this all the time, you add a couple of small corals and then the question comes, hey, I've added two corals into my tank. What do I need to be dosing to make those corals happy? Nothing. And this is where we get into trouble. There seems to be this mindset in the reefing community now that to have a successful tank, we have to dump a bunch of stuff in the tank. And that's just not the case. More often than not, you're going to see more success the more you leave the tank alone rather than dumping a bunch of stuff in it. Things like Red Sea AB+, Reef Roids, other amino acids, even dosing calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium sometimes is just flat out not needed. Most of the time it's not. In fact, it is only needed some of the time. And usually the people who have that situation know that because they have a tank full of coral and their nutrients keep coming down and they reach a, a low point on their nutrients and they have to supplement feed these things to make sure they're getting what they need. For most people, we just don't have to put that stuff in the tank. Take my 300 gallon tank behind me, for example. I have a 300 gallon system and I have 80 something frags in this system of corals of all different types. I have euphilia, I have SPS, I have zoas, I have pallies, I have rock flower anemones. I've, I've got a whole range of corals in this tank. I don't have to dose anything to this tank, nothing at all. And I haven't even done a water change on the tank in two months because I'm trying to build my nutrients up. They were too low and I didn't like how low they were. But my point is, if I took all of those same 80 coral frags and nims and all that stuff and put them in a 20 gallon tank, now that's a different story the ratio of the bio load of the corals to the amount of available nutrients and chemicals and elements in that volume of water is very different. And in that case, I might have to add something to the tank. So you can see how this is very tank individually specific. You are going to have to get your tank through these processes with what your tank needs, adding those things into that tank is going to extend the amount of time it takes your tank to get to a state of stability. Now, I will quickly run through some more of the things that you can do without getting into too much detail on those. And then I have a really important statement I'm going to make here in a little while right at the end of the video. You're going to want to stick around for that. Thoughtful equipment selection goes a long way into the stability of your aquarium. You want to use good quality proven equipment in your tank. Now, I get it. The economy is trash and everybody's struggling and all of that. And I completely understand. I use a lot of Amazon products on my tank. 
but I tend to go towards the products that at least have had some time on the market for them to be developed and the kinks worked out. I don't fall into that category of people who believe that you have to buy the most expensive thing available for it to be good. I have seen thousand dollar lights melt when $50 lights were used as their replacement and lasted for years after that. It's just a crapshoot. Something like the auto top off in your aquarium is probably not a place you would want to spend less money. Go ahead and spend the money on a good one. Get a high quality auto top off. This thing has the potential to flood your entire house or dump way too much or not enough water back into your tank leading to an instability in your salinity. Now it's going to be very small unless it's a very small aquarium. Like in my 300 gallon, the difference between a half gallon of top off isn't going to matter. But if you have a 13.5, it could be the difference between flooding your kitchen counter or not. So spend the good money on good products in the critical areas. You're going to want to make sure you have decent flow pumps in the tank and decent circulation pumps and stuff like this. You don't want these things failing on you or burning out or adding stray voltage to the aquarium. Use some proven stuff. Ensuring that you have effective filtration and nutrient import export kind of balance is also very important. For example, you wouldn't want to run a Tidal 110 hang on the back filter on a 600 gallon shark tank. And I know that's a wild example, but it illustrates the point. You have to match all of these things together. Keeping in mind, that we are building ecosystems, not fish tanks. Regular maintenance is another part of stability that is often overlooked by so many people because what we do to the tank also has to be stable and consistent. Any changes we make need to be made on a routine and they need to be small. If you're gonna make some kind of adjustment to the aquarium, it's much better to do that in small incremental adjustment over days or even weeks rather than one large crashing adjustment all at one time. And I have a perfect example of that with my own tank. Recently, I put crushed coral into my frag tank. I was hoping that I would get a slow and steady release of calcium and alkalinity into the aquarium. I've done this before and it worked in exactly that same way. But in this tank, because all tanks are different, it took about three weeks for that thing to really kick off and start doing what it was going to do. But when it did, it went ballistic and it spiked my alkalinity and my calcium way higher than I wanted them to be. As a result of that, my corals didn't like that situation. Just like your guests are not going to like it if you put raw bell pepper in at the end of cooking your chili. Don't do that. I should not have added that crushed coral to my tank at the time and at the volume that I did. I just overdid it. And I'm not afraid to admit that even I make mistakes after all of this time. I'm showing you these mistakes so that you don't make them too. I knew better, but I did it anyway. I was like, I've done this before. It's not going to be that bad. It's going to be a slow increase. Wrong. And now it's going to take me weeks to revert that slowly enough that it doesn't cause more stress and damage to my corals. I've seen the difference. All my euphilia over here are a little bit more closed up than normal. My zoas are kind of kind of scrunched in a little bit. They're just not that happy. And it's because I made a change that was too big and fluctuated things too quickly, thereby destroying any stability that I had in the aquarium. A couple of other things that you could look into and think about is gradually adding your livestock over time. You don't want to put a whole bunch of stuff in the tank all at once. That's sort of an obvious one. And even get in, getting into computer automation control, something like the Hydros Aquatecture. Aquatecture? Architecture. That's the word. I made up a new word. The Hydros Architecture that you can get automation for the aquarium where it monitors things and reports them back to you. You can dig into that if you want to, but any of that kind of stuff like a heater controller and things like that is going to add to the tank's ability to remain consistent and remain stable. One very important point that I'd like to make that a lot of people sometimes forget about, or maybe we don't think about it and we don't plan this into our tank build is emergency preparedness. And I have videos on that specifically detailing the things that you can do if there's an emergency power outage. You have to think about that. 
at this point, if this tank crashed because of a power outage, I would lose probably somewhere between one and $2,000 in corals and fish. I don't want to do that. So I have a generator that I can connect to my home and run as long as I need to run it. And it will supply my entire house with power. That is simply not an option for some people. I am fortunate that we were able to get one. And I would like to thank my channel members for being helpful in that area. Your contributions monthly to the Reef Rookies mission of respectful reef keeping absolutely played a role in me being able to get that backup generator for my house. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, click the join button on the homepage. There's a lot of tiers over there to choose from, even one as low as a dollar. Anyway, back to emergency preparedness. You need to develop a contingency plan for your aquarium if something happens. And this plays into the stability because you want to be able to run your heating, run your lighting, and run your flow in the aquarium in the event that there's an emergency of some kind. You're going to have to try to maintain the same environment as you have been with that tank or things are going to go south. Most importantly, realize that stability in your aquarium is a months to potentially even years long game, depending on how you set the tank up. You are never going to get a tank to go from the nitrogen cycle to the stability phase back to back. It's just not going to happen. Now, for that announcement that I told you I was going to make, my Facebook group is nearing 10,000 members. We're just a little bit shy of 9,000 today. And at the 10,000 member mark, I am going to run a contest on my Facebook group, and there are going to be prizes for the winners. Exactly what those prizes are, I don't know yet, but we're going to find out soon. So if you want to be a part of that, make sure you jump into the Facebook group and look out for that announcement. Now, that's what's next. Click that video right there.